When it comes to machining, there are always a bunch of ways to do the same cut. Face milling is no different, but there are some tools and techniques you should know to get the finish you're really looking for. Face milling is defined as the process of cutting surfaces that are perpendicular to the cutter axis. More simply put, face milling creates flat surfaces and can make shiny surface finishes. Shell mills and fly cutters are most often used for face milling, but depending on what kind of surface finish you're looking for, you could use an end mill as well. When using an end mill for this process, the cutter is working like it would with any other operation, moving through the material on the X and Y axes. This is valuable if you want to cut a specific pattern into your final surface. While things will get fairly flat, an end mill will still leave tool marks or microscopic height differences, sometimes as small as a tenth or less that can create an appealing pattern. An end mill often comes to a sharp point at the corner, and the bottom edge is usually at about a one degree angle as it goes towards the center, so it doesn't overlap with the previous pass. Using a shell mill is a good choice if you're looking for a more consistent surface finish. Shell mills have several inserts on the outer edges of the cutter, so when the cutter first hits the material, it removes a small amount of stock, depending on your depth of cut, of course. But as the cutter passes over the workpiece, the other teeth actually work to remove stock that was left as a burr or as a result of the springing of the workpiece or the cutter. Also, these shell mills are great for general use in face milling operations with most all materials. Shell mills provide quality surface finishes at higher speeds, while a fly cutter can create a much finer finish with less horsepower. While it can be considered an advantage to have multiple cutting teeth on a shell mill, having all those inserts has the potential to cause more headaches. Varying heights and subtle differences in geometries can cause varying chip load amongst the inserts. This won't translate well to your surface finish. Most facing cutting inserts have a wide, flat side that's known as a wiper. The wiper allows the tool to make more forward progress without leaving scallops because it overlaps the previous cut. The Superfly is a perfect example of this, as its wiper is almost one eighth of an inch wide. A fly cutter only uses one insert, which, while slower, can provide a more uniform surface finish. Now, some things to consider when you're face milling. Take into account your tool stability and the horsepower in the spindle. With all those teeth and a smaller spindle, a million tooth shell mill is going to get bogged down really fast. For Tormach machines, we recommend sticking to our shell mill if you're going to be cutting things like steel. The 38 millimeter shell mill can do the operation a bit faster in harder metals, but the fly cutter with the proper inserts can handle such operations. It'll be a bit slower, but it can handle things. In softer materials like aluminum, the fly cutter will still give you fantastic results. Or the shear hog has been known to get some chips flying while leaving a nice reflective sheen. It's usually recommended that you position the cutter off center from your workpiece when face milling. This provides the thinnest chip at the cutter's exit, which leads to a cleaner cut and finer finish. To this end, frequent entering and exiting of the workpiece should be avoided. It can create some stresses on the cutting edge that may result in dwell and chatter tendencies. For the same reason, you should also try to avoid face milling over holes or slots because these edges can cause multiple cut entries and exits. If you have to cut over these surfaces with these sorts of interruptions, you can help ease the stress on your cutter by reducing the feed rate. Face milling operations are a great way to remove some material and get a nice flat surface, but the real joy comes when you get to see that surface finish. Rest assured, if you aren't already addicted to facing, you will be when you see that shine. Thanks for watching. Check out our latest videos here, and for more metalworking tips, tricks, and stories, subscribe to our YouTube channel.